We lay our crowns shut our heart and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. Yeah. So we lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted, oh. Above all the gods, we lay our and worship you. So the Lord is good. The Lord is good. So open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. Tell him, Father, you are worthy of our praise. We give you all the worship. We adore your name. We adore your holy name. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Come on, give him the fruit of your lip this morning. Open up your mouth and magnify Jesus. Come on, before the songs come up, make sure you are telling the Lord something. Offer up worship to Jesus. Offer up worship to Jesus. Offer up worship to Jesus. Come on, offer up worship to Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Come on, give him. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Open up your mouth and tell him how good he is. Open up your mouth and give him the fruit of your lips. Out of you should flow rivers of living water. Come on, open up your mouth and worship Jesus. We are not waiting for a song to worship. We are worship. So worship come out from deep within us. Not for what you have done, but because of who you are. Father, we worship you. We reverence your name, Jesus. And forever to your name. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise. And forever. Under the congregation, can we say, You are good? You Forever to your name. One more time, you are good, you are, you are kind. I have never seen. I'm devoted. And forever. Can we join in now? Say, say, Lord, you are good, you are good.
verse again. You're my king. Oh, yes. You're my Lord. You're the mighty man of war. <laughs> so I'm devoted to your praise and forever to. Come on, we we'll take it again. We we'll say, You're my king. Oh, yes. You're my Lord. You're the mighty man of war. I'm devoted.
Baba, Baba. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. We're ready to give the Lord praise this morning. Can you join those that's to the King of Kings? Always, you say, Oh, Mama, say you're always, you're always on time. You can't do no you wrong. Can't do no wrong. Oh, Mama, say, Baba, Baba, leave the ninety-nine. Always on time. Oh, Mama, oh, Mama, hey, so always, always on time. You can't do no you wrong. You can't do no wrong. Oh, Mama, say. Come on, are you sure? The Lord lives in 99 just for this one. He is in 99, always for this one. He is in 99, always for this one. Name above every other name. Say, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? One more time, we say, name above every, name above every other day. What can't you take? What can't you take? What can you take? What can't you take, Jesus? So we say, Creator of the universe, the universe. Say, what can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do?
If you 
have said. All I need to do is to believe it. You have a trust. You're not a man. You're not a man to stop doing. One more time. You are good. You are good. You are kind. You are more than this. That's what words. Try to describe. Elohim. Elion. Ali Shelly. We. Your greatness. Your greatness. Is all I see. There is nothing. There is nothing. of our king. Open up your mouth and worship the king. The Lord is mighty. The Lord is mighty. You have a track record of keeping your word and you are not hey. Come on, make your worship resounding. Make your worship resounding. Make your worship resounding. You have the track record of keeping in your word. You're not about to. One more time. You have a track record. You have a track record of keeping in your word. You're not about. Come on, can you look at that situation that brought you to church? You are the track record of keeping your word. You're not a man to stop doing it now. So, Lord, you are by you. Without the music. Oh, Lord, you are by you. Say, she be one Lord for you are. She pay le for juaro. Say a Lord walk by Come on, can worship love this atmosphere for the next few seconds. Maya da 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 ba. Asota parandes ikapa. Shata barada ba shika da barada balatas. Ekomba ra shivai kubata shikatai rubada shiyanante shikiti barada balatai. Now the presence of God is evident in this atmosphere. Ruba shia kuba leti barada shoda barada balates kuba ratiata shikiti barada balatai. Can you bless the name of the Lord intentionally? Kuba rada balatai. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Supara sika dante saiko barata balatas. Come on, if you know that Jesus is the only name you can call upon in times of trouble, shut up. Come on, begin to call on the name of Jesus. 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 I know. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's a very simple and straightforward one today. Because the miracle worker is here, and the one who needs a miracle is also here. <laughs> he said, here is water. Here am I. Now what forbids baptism? Tell your neighbor, it's miracle time. Yes. Say, it's blessing time. Yes. It's breakthrough time. Yes. And we're looking at the subject matter of in one single day. In 24 hours. Glory be to God. Let me start with Zechariah chapter 3 verse 9. It says, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Zechariah chapter 3, verse number 9. How many years will it take God to take care of their iniquity? In one day. Many things are going to happen for you in the next 24 hours. I read Isaiah 66, verses 8 to 9, New Living Translation. Isaiah 66, 8 to 9, NLT. Who has ever seen anything as strange as this? Who ever heard of such a thing? Has a nation ever been born in a single day? Have you ever heard that before? Until God did it. In one day, he gave back to a whole nation. He pulled a nation out of another nation. In how many days? In one day. Glory be to God. Now, talking about strange things, he said, have you ever seen anything as strange as this before? In Luke chapter 5, we look at verses 17, I'm sorry, uh, 17, then 24 to 26. Luke chapter 5, New King James says, Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, there were there Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and what was there, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That's all that matters. Once his healing power is present, just about anything can happen. And all over this nation, at our various viewing centers, and those who are watching us online from around the world, right where you are, the power of God to meet you at the point of your need, to solve your problem, to heal your diseases, to give you that needed breakthrough, is present right where you are. And then they brought a man, a very terrible case. One that every doctor had given up on. And they let him down in front of him as if to, see, to say, let us see how that power will solve this problem. They were in for a surprise. The Bible says Jesus, first of all, forgave the sin of that man because his sin brought his problem upon him. So he says, son, your sins be forgiven thee. And in the passage we read earlier, he said, I will forgive all their sins in one day. And immediately after sins are removed, everything that sin brought must also be removed. Whatever your mistakes brought into your life shall be removed. Whatever your errors have inflicted upon you shall be resolved. Whatever the enemy has done against you shall be reversed. As soon as Jesus took the stumbling block out of the way, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Look at verse 25. Okay, 24. Many of you know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. That bed had carried him for years. It was time for him to carry his bed. It's time for you to support those who have been supporting you. <laughs> In verse 25, the Bible says, in response to that divine intervention, immediately he rose up before them, 
took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. I see you going back home today rejoicing. I see you going back today celebrating. In verse 26, we're talking about strange things. Have you ever seen such strange things? God asked. Verse 26, they were all amazed. And they glorified God. And were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Pleasant, strange things. Wonderful, strange things. Beautiful, strange things. Your eyes too shall see strange things. Amen. Glory be to God. In order for that strange thing to happen for you, God gives us a prescription. What does God give us? A prescription. In James chapter 5, from verse 13 to verse 15, New King James Version. James chapter 5, 13 to 15. He says, is anyone among you suffering? Can anybody relate to that? Suffering in any way, he says, the prescription is, let him pray. Because there is a God in heaven who answers prayers. And the Bible says, thou that answered prayers, unto thee shall all men gather. Let me put your right hand very respectfully and gently on the shoulder of your neighbor. And say, get ready to pray today. Because there is a God to answer your prayer. So, if your problem is suffering, suffering of any kind, what is the prescription of scripture? Let him pray. And I'm going to show you how to pray in a the, in the while. Now, he says, but if your own case is that you are not suffering, you are actually cheerful. You have everything to dance about, everything to celebrate about. There is also a prescription for you. What does the scripture say? Let him sing. <laughs> so nobody is left out. If you have a problem, there is something for you to do. If you don't have a problem, there is also an assignment for you. Help me tell your neighbor again very respectfully. Please locate your own assignment now. <laughs> say, what are you prepared to do today? Are you prepared to pray? And are you prepared to sing? Whatever your case. There is a third one. There is a third one. Look at it. It says in verse 14, Is anyone among you sick? If your own is disease, sickness, affliction, infirmity, malady of any kind, any of you sick, your own is to do what? To call. What are you supposed to do? Call. Place a call to the elders of the church. Let them come forward and anoint you with oil and pray over you. And the Bible guarantees that the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Anyone sick, let him call. Verse 15. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith will do what? We save the sick. And then what will the Lord do? The Lord will raise him up. And if his problem was occasioned by sin, it doesn't matter. God says, even that one, I will take care of it in one day. <laughs> Glory be to God. So three categories of people in the house. Those who are suffering from one thing or the other. Some people to eat, nawahala. Some people are suffering from unemployment. Business stagnancy. Suffering from delayed marriage. All kinds of things that people suffer from. He said, don't worry, there is a prescription. You have come to the right clinic. You have come to the right physician. The great physician. He doesn't refer patients to other doctors. Every patient that comes to him, he has a pill for them. So, are you suffering? There is something to do. Are you cheerful? There is something to do. And are you sick? There is something to do. Help me again. Look at your neighbor face to face and say, congratulations, neighbor. Say, your solution is here. Say, your answer is here. Say, your miracle is here. Can I hear you from Abuja? Say, your answer is here. Can I hear you from Aja? 
Say your answer is here. Ilori, can I hear your voice? Ikorodu, can I hear your voice? Ojo Koroa, Kowajo, can I hear your voice? Abel Kuta, can I hear your voice? United Kingdom, can I hear your voice? USA, are you there? Canada, are you there? Say the Lord is here. He is your solution provider. So he says, if you are suffering, I don't know what you are suffering from, but I know the prescription. As long as it is suffering, there is a prescription. What is the prescription? Let him pray. So what do you pray? How do you pray? Let me give you a lead. Isaiah 38, verse number 14. Hallelujah. Isaiah 38, verse number 14. <laughs> NKJV. Is that on the screen? Because my own screen here is not showing. Isaiah 38, verse 14. If you can read it, can we read it together? One, two, go. Like a crane or a swallow. So I chattered. Wait, wait, wait. I hope you understand that one. A crane is a bird. A swallow is a bird. I know... The Yoruba is called, uh, one of them, Alakpandede. <laughs> if you have read Yoruba Bible before. <laughs> they are birds. Said so like, this bird called a crane. And this bird called a swallow. So I chattered. Mondu, mongmi, monke, mong. That is That is what it means to chatter. Okay? It says, I mourned like a dove. Another bird. You know the dove? Okay? He said, my eyes failed from looking upward because I have been told that my help cometh from above. And I have been looking up so until my eyes are failing. Say, oh Lord, I am oppressed. Oh Lord, I am suffering. Oh Lord, I am sick. Oh Lord, I have been experiencing delay. Oh Lord, I am pained. So what is the prayer point? Is there anybody going through any of these things? Let him pray. And what is the prayer point? Oh Lord, undertake for me. What is the prayer point? Hmm. You, 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 I, I'm not sure you're getting the point I'm trying to make. What, what? He says, oh Lord, do what? Undertake. And when God undertakes for any man, the enemy can never overtake that man. Can you raise your right hand wherever you are? Around the world, in Maguro, in Mowe, wherever you are, raise up your hand. Say, oh Lord, undertake for me. Oh Lord, undertake for me. Now, if you recall in Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, verses 7, 8, 9, the Bible says that Israel has suffered for four centuries in slavery, in bondage, in humiliation. And then the Bible says, the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry, which means as they were suffering, they didn't keep quiet. They cried, oh Lord, undertake for us. And that was why God heard their cry. May God hear your cry this morning. And when you cry to him, he says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse number 3, call upon me and I will not answer you. Oh, there are protestants in this house today. Call upon me and what will happen? I will answer you. And I won't stop there. I will even show you. You will see visions. God will show you ideas. He will show you channels. He will show you revelations. He will show you what is behind the issue. He will show you how to solve the problem. He will give you step-by-step -step guidance. I will answer. I will show you. <laughs> the things you currently don't know, I will reveal them. Because one of the problems of humanity is ignorance. My people are destroyed for lack of of knowledge. The things you do not know can put you in dire straits. But God says, I will damage your ignorance. I will show you what you do not know. Oh Lord, 
undertake for me. Now the big question. What does it mean to undertake? I searched through the scriptures. The King James Bible and a few other translations call it undertake. But I looked at the Christian Standard Bible. It uses the word support. Oh Lord, support me. I looked at the contemporary English version. It uses the word help. Oh Lord, help me. In the Good News Translation, the word is rescue. Oh Lord, rescue me. In the Dorem's 1899 American edition of the Bible, it says, Oh Lord, answer for me. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says, Oh Lord, guarantee my life. There are threats against my life. Guarantee my safety. Guarantee my security. In the easy English Bible, it says, Oh Lord, save me from trouble. Okay? In the 1599 Geneva Bible, it says, Oh Lord, comfort me. I am troubled on every side. In the American Standard Version, it says, Oh Lord, be my shorty. In the NIV, New International Version, it says, Oh Lord, come to my aid in my trouble. And then, in the International Standard Version, it says, Oh Lord, stand up for me. So if you didn't know what it means for God to undertake for you, by now you know. With the various meanings and translations. All right. Now let's go to the Yoruba Bible. <laughs> How many people know that Yoruba Bible, Yoruba is a, is a very special language? Very special language. Now I just picked the B part of that verse in two translations of Yoruba Bible. I'm sure you know Yoruba Bible too has several translations. Okay. In one of the translations, it says, Oluwa. God, I am not comfortable the way I am. I am not satisfied. I am not happy. Things are rough. Things are tough. In other words, lend me a hand in this matter. Don't leave me alone to contend with this. Now look at another Yoruba translation. It says, Idamupami Iwoluwao me. Come for my help. me. Stand up for me and give me a helping hand. That's why I like that song. I think they took it from Isaiah 38, 14 that we have just read. Are you ready to sing that Yoruba song? Dide togun togun. Dide tija tija. Dide ninu agbara. Dide oloru. Are you still sitting down? Let it roll, let it roll, let it roll, let it roll. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It looks like all of you belong to the second category. I can't see category one and category three here yet. Maybe in other places. You know those categories I'm referring to. Category one, it says, are you suffering? That's category one. Category two, are you cheerful? Category three, are you sick? One, suffering. Three, sick. Those who are suffering who need help, they don't do jelenke psychedelic like you are doing. You belong, you belong to category two. The cheerful people know wahala. Jelenke, everything is fine. That's what I'm reading. I hope I'm wrong. Now, I want to see desperate people today who are desperate for divine intervention, desperate for mercy, desperate for the hand of God to be stretched into their situation. You will sing it with force, very high tempo, tempo, come on now.
I'm still going to sing, I mean, Psalm 68, verse 1. If you can put that on the screen, Psalm 68, verse 1. It goes along that same line. For the sake of those who don't understand Yoruba Greek, that's why we're going to sing this one. That one we just sang, say, Lord, arise in your power and come and defend me. Come and fight for me. Come and undertake for me. Now, let's look at this one. The Psalm of David say, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. And, and don't think that we're talking about those who are direct enemies of God. The Bible says anyone who is an enemy of a child of God, direct enemy of a child of God, is an indirect enemy of God. So when he says let his enemies scatter, he's actually referring to your enemies. Those who are working against you, working against divine agenda, working against God's, God's blueprint for your life. He says let God arise and defend me. You know that song, don't you? Let it the tempo very high. Arise, oh God, and the enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Oh God, oh God, arise, oh God, arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Oh God, oh God, arise, oh God, arise, oh God, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, and your enemies be scattered. Oh God, oh God, arise. Thank you, thank you. We will still sing it, but be seated for a while. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus 12 from verse 1. New King James. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. It was not, it was not January 1. It was not February 1. It was not March 1. Any day God begins in your life is the beginning of month for you. What God is saying is that today is a new beginning. Today is a fresh start. Verse 3. Speak to all the congregation of Israel. Leave no one out. Everybody. Saying on the 10th of this month, every man take for himself, blah, blah, blah. You know the story. Don't you know the story? Because of time. Let's go to verse 11. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Because what God wanted to do for them was a 24-hour miracle. God says, look, I don't have all the time in the world. I want to do it now. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Put on your dancing shoes. Put on your belt. Print your invitation card. Begin to get your accommodation set for your wedding. Because it is about to happen. He says, I will pass through the land. And I will do this and do that and do that. Now, what I want to let you know was that God was instituting for them the first holy communion. The lamb was the lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. Okay? And the blood was to be smeared on the lintel, on the doorpost. And he says, you partake of the lamb, the body of Christ, and then the blood is smeared on your lintel, and you will see at least 10 things I will do for you in 24 hours. 10 different things in how many hours? All in one day. 10 things all in one day. Okay? Look at the first one. Verse 12. Exodus 12, 12. I will pass through the land of Egypt, and that night I will strike. The first thing God did was he struck the enemies of Israel. So the first one was that judgment took place because they cried unto him. Oh Lord, undertake for us. And then God responded by instituting the first holy communion. And then when they obeyed his instruction, they took the bread, they took the blood, and God came down. And the number one thing he did was he released judgment against their enemies. So it was a day of judgment. And this day, people of God, 
I announce is the day of judgment. Yeah. Now, there are people who normally take vows. They will say, over my dead body, will you marry? And they have pronounced their own judgment. <laughs> because you will marry. And they will not witness it. Because they have said, over their dead body. They say, over my dead body, will you prosper? Now, you will prosper. But they have pronounced their own judgment. Because they will not be there to see it. Because they have said over their dead bodies. Okay. So it was a day of judgment. Number two. If you look at verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the people shall not be, the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Look at verse uh, Psalm 105. Now, Psalm 105 and Exodus 12 are parallels. So I want you to look at the two. Exodus 12 and Psalm 105. They are parallels, describing the same scenario. Now in Psalm 105, verse 43, it says, He brought out his people with joy. He brought them out. So it was a day of escape. Today shall be the day of escape. The Bible says, In vain has the snare been set. Like a bird, you will escape from the snare of the fowler. That day was a day of what? A day of escape. Every trap set for you by the enemy, you shall escape. Yeah. Number three, if you look at Exodus chapter 12, 31 to 33, that day was also a day of freedom. Up until that day, they were designated as slaves. They were owned by somebody. But from that day, they were no longer slaves. It was a day of what? A day of freedom. A day of liberty in the name of Jesus. Number four, if you look at Psalm 105, verse 37, the A part of it, he also brought them out with silver and gold. So it was a day of breakthrough for prosperity and financial empowerment. Yesterday, they didn't own anything. They were owned by somebody. Today, they had silver and gold. In 24 hours, their status changed. Those who couldn't eat what they liked now could afford and even feed others. They went to the Egyptians by divine instruction to borrow silver, to borrow gold and precious things. And God pressured the Egyptians to oblige them. So by the time they were leaving, they left with what? Silver and gold. They were bedecked with money in one day. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yesterday, something very wonderful happened for me, you know. I can't give you details. Uh, it's not, it's, I mean, I, I, I looked at my bank account on Friday, and the balances there were not very beautiful. I didn't like what I saw. And I said, God, I, I'll be your child now. They hold me. How can, can I even show this account to anybody? I will be embarrassed to let anybody see my balances. And I said, God, I need a 24-hour miracle. I need a 24-hour miracle. That was on Friday, 48 hours ago. Then I woke up yesterday morning. I came down to my study. And as I picked my phone, because I left my phone in my study. So when I came down from the bedroom and I got there, I picked my phone and I looked at it and I saw a message that somebody sent. There was a, there was a product I wanted to sell to somebody, you know. He ignored me all this while. Suddenly he said, ah, this thing that you said uh, I should come and buy, are you not going to buy us? Is it still available? I said it's available now. Why not? It's still available. And then we finished the deal. Guess what? There were four others. So yesterday I sold five. Five. Now, I didn't call anybody. They were the ones calling me and looking for me. I don't want to tell you my margin on each one of them. <laughs> so that you won't know my new balance now. But, but something happened yesterday in 24 hours. And I said, God, what is this? I said, God, what is this? I mean, five. I sold five. Each one of these things sells for three point something million. And I sold five. Yesterday, five. In fact, one of them sells for eight point something million. One of them. And I didn't call them. They were the ones calling me. I woke up and they just started calling me. They just started, 
Hey, somebody say 24 hour miracle. Say 24 hour miracle. Say 24 hour miracle. Number five. It was a day of a new beginning. Say this day shall be the beginning of months for you. Today is your new beginning. Number six. It was a dawn of a new identity. Yesterday, what was the identity? Slave. Today, what is your new identity? Freeborn. Your identity, your status will change. God will give you a new name. Number seven. It was a day of corporate divine healing. Psalm 105, verse 37. The B passes. says, and there was none feeble among his tribes. As he brought them out with silver and gold, there was none feeble. So he gave them prosperity and he made sure that the silver and gold will not be spent on hospital bills. So he healed every disease. He healed every affliction. There was not one sick among them. Not one feeble among them. Glory be to God. Number eight. It was a day in which the table turned against their enemies. Psalm 105, verse 38. Look at verse 38 of Psalm 105. Verse 38. The table turned. He said, Egypt was glad when they departed. Why? For the fear of them had fallen upon them. Before now, it was the Israelites who feared the masters, Egyptians. Now, it is their masters, former masters, as you say, that now began to... Fear them. The table had turned. Those you used to fear will now begin to fear you. Ah, uh, only seven people heard that. Amen. La de Makoshka I said, those that you used to fear will now begin to fear you. The things you used to be afraid of will now be afraid of you. Uh, it, it happened, it happened, it happened for Paul. You know, they went on an island and they escaped from a shipwreck. And while they were on that island, they were being entertained by their guests, the barbarians. And they sat by fire during winter to warm themselves. As Paul was stoking the fire, the Bible says there was a venomous snake, poisonous snake that bit him. And everybody said, oh, this one must be a murderer. You know how people give you a label that doesn't belong to you? They give you a name that is not your name. They said this one must be a murderer. He said he escaped from shipwreck. And now judgment will not let him rest. Now a snake has beaten him. Because they didn't have, you know, anti-venom to administer. All they did was to wait helplessly and hopelessly for him to swell up and fall down and die. The Bible says they waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and nothing happened. And scripture says they changed their mind. And they said this one is no longer a murderer. This one is now a God. <laughs> Glory be to God. I said those things you used to fear, they will begin to fear you. Those who thought you could never amount to anything, they will see your day of celebration. Not that they wish you bad. It's just that they don't no longer believe in you. You know, there are two categories. Those who wants you dead? Who said over their dead body? Who don't want you to do well? Who don't want you to get married? Who don't want you to prosper? They said over their dead body. Those are the ones who are evil. Okay? They wish you evil. The Bible says it will happen, so it will happen over their dead body. But the second category, they don't wish you evil. But they have evaluated you. They have assessed you. They have looked at your trajectory. They have looked at your track record. They have looked at your pedigree. They have looked at your history. They have even looked into your family background. You say, uh, can anything good come out of Egypt, out of Nazareth? Not that they are the ones wishing you bad. It's just that they have lost confidence in you. They have lost faith in you. They no longer believe that you can amount to anything. For them, they will not die. But they will be alive to see your turnaround. They will be alive to see your goodness in the name of Jesus. So the table turned. And for you, in 24 hours, in the realm of the spirit, there is divine programming going on by the spirit of the Lord, by the word of prophecy, that all the lines will now begin to fall in pleasant places for you. 
hear the word of the Lord. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. And he shall eat the good of the land. He shall eat from his doings. In the name of Jesus, if they obey and they are willing, they will live their lives in pleasure and in prosperity. They will eat the good of the land. In the name of Jesus, it was a day in which the table turned. Hallelujah. Number nine, it was a day of promise fulfilled. The promise that God had made to Abraham, say your descendants will come into Egypt and for 400 years, four generations, they will be in slavery. He said, but a day will come which I will bring them out. That day was the day in which that promise was fulfilled. Guess what? Galatians 3.29 says, every promise that God made to Abraham now belongs to those of you who are in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 Verse 29, if you are Christ, tell your neighbor if you are Christ. In other words, if you belong to Christ, if you are born again, if you are in Jesus, if you are a member of the kingdom of God, then you are the seed of Abraham and you are heirs, heirs, according to the promise. Give me the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. Let's look at the NLT. NLT. And now that you belong to Christ... You are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And what? God's promise to Abraham now belongs to what? So the promise God made to their father Abraham on that particular day in 24 hours, God brought it to pass. Every promise of Abraham will find fulfillment in your destiny. Fulfillment in your marriage. Fulfillment in your business. And Abraham was rich in silver, in gold, in men servants, in male servants. He even was so rich, he had an army of his own. Are you with me? That nations came to sign bilateral agreements with him to say, we will not hurt you, you too must not hurt us. That's how far God lifted Abraham. And it is in that covenant that you are operating. Today, that covenant will find expression. In the name of Jesus. And number 10. If you look at Exodus 12, 14, this day shall be to you a memorial. It's a day to remember. A day never to be forgotten. The things that will begin to manifest in your destiny, you cannot forget in a hurry. Ah, somebody is just too casual for my liking. I say, you cannot forget in a hurry. You will not forget in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. So this day shall be to you a memorial, a day to remember all these ten things in one single day. I call that the 24-hour miracle. Ten things packed into one day. Now, it looks like God had forgotten them. It looked like God had abandoned them. It looked like God didn't love them. God didn't like them. But everything was piling up and building up. Piling up and building up. Piling up and building up. And then it culminated in a one-day drama. One-day drama. One-day manifestation. And in 24 hours, 10 things in quick succession. 10 things in quick succession. 10 things in quick succession. That shall be your story. Just like yesterday, I received the first SMS. Oh, WhatsApp. I responded. We concluded the deal. And then I saw the second one. I responded. We concluded the deal. And then I saw the, before I could say Jack Robinson, five deals. Ah, all in less than, in fact, yesterday, it was less than two hours that all the five happened. Less than two hours. And I prophesy by the same token, by the same anointing, by the same unction, I decree that what will begin to unfold what will begin to manifest for you in your business, in your life, in your marriage, in your home, in the next 24 hours, will be mouth-watering, will be incredible, will be amazing. The lines will begin to fall in pleasant places for you. How did God orchestrate that? How did he? Number one, he told them to come to the table. This is the lamb. This is the blood of the lamb. 
And that's why we're having communion this morning. It's just, it's just a symbol. We're doing it symbolically, okay? It is not those elements that we are relying on, but we are just symbolizing what happened on that day. We are taking the Lamb of God, the blood of the Lamb. This is our house. This is our temple. And we are applying the lamp upon this house. Okay? But wait a minute. Before we go ahead to apply the lamp, don't forget that the promise God made was for the congregation of the people of God. It was for Israelites, those who are in the Abrahamic covenant. If you are not in the covenant, this is not your concern. It does not concern you. It does not relate to you. But the good news is that you can come into the covenant right here and now. You can be born again right here and now. You can receive the very life of Jesus Christ into yourself as a new creature and become born again. And then you can plug in. You can plug in and participate in what we're about to do. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes in case there are people in the house this morning who are not born again, you are not a seed of Abraham yet, but you want to be. You are not a seed of Abraham yet, but you want to be wherever you are. You are the first person I want to deal with. Raise up your hand to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And let me pray for you. I see one hand up there, a few hands on the gallery. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, raise those hands. Anyone here? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Those of you who are raising your hand, all of you, can you come to the front here quickly? Quickly, quickly. Let's sing quiet, just as I am, without one plea. Do it fast, do it fast, do it fast. Just as I am, without one plea. Come forward, come forward. Be part of the covenant, and then we will proceed to the next one. We proceed to the next one. Come, 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 come. Just as I am, one more time. All over the place. In Abuja. In Ilori. In Oshoko, in Akomajo, in Ikorodu, in Isharinov, in Ojokoro, in Ikotun, in Skegness, in Abelkuta, in Mowe, in Magboro. Begin to come to the front. Begin to come to the altar. Begin to come to the front. Begin to come to the altar. And let the resident pastors take charge. Let the resident pastors take charge. Resident pastors take charge. Can I ask all of you to please go on your knees? Go on your knees, please. Those of you who are in front, just kneel down. Okay? Kneel down and say to Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a repentant sinner, asking for mercy. Forgive all my sins. Wash me in your blood. I open my heart. I receive the life of Christ into my spirit right now as I surrender to Jesus and receive him as my Lord and Savior. By faith, I lay claim to salvation, the forgiveness of sins. I am redeemed. I am born again. I am made whole. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Father, I pray for these ones. Forgive all their sins. Cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Make them new creatures today. Let old things pass away. 
make all things new in their lives. Make all things new in their destinies. Let today be the beginning of a new season, a new dispensation in their lives. Let the peace of God that passes understanding come into them. Every curse, generational curses, family curses, community curses that may have been tampering with your destiny, today they are terminated. You are today inaugurated and inducted into the kingdom of God. And the blessings of Abraham will begin to follow you from now on. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Come on, church. Please go after this sister. Follow her. Just follow her. Follow her. All right, let's celebrate them. Glory be to God. Now they can join us in the Holy Communion. So bring out your own communion elements all over the place in all our parishes and our viewing centers. Bring out your communion elements. Lift up your bread. If you don't mind, you can stand on your feet where you are and say, Lord, today is the beginning of days for me. Today is the beginning of a new season. As a seed of Abraham, I lay claim to the Abrahamic covenant. Every promise you made to Abraham, today they are fulfilled. The blessings of prosperity, the promise of prosperity, the promise of longevity, the promise of posterity, the promise of spirituality. I lay claim to all of them today in the name of Jesus. You may now partake. The blood of the Lamb that was smeared on the doorpost of the house. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost, and I apply the blood upon this temple now. Go ahead. So we're going to sing that song. I still have about 11 to 12 minutes of my time. And what you will do is you will cry to God about those areas. Those who are suffering, you will cry, undertake for me. Those who are cheerful, you will just sing psalms and praises to God. Those who are sick, I want the elders of the church, the ordained ministers, the pastors, come and line up here. And we get the anointing oil, the anointing oil. And the Bible says, are you sick? Call on the elders of the church. All over our parishes, all over. Let the anointing oil be brought forward. Let the ordained ministers line up in front. And those who are sick, let them come forward and let them be anointed and be prayed for. Okay? I want all the ordained ministers to step out first. All the ordained ministers that will be laying hands on people and anointing them, please come to the front. Let's just line up like that. Ushers, take your position. You are going to be directing them and guiding them to come one by one to them. Where is the anointing oil? Just wait, just wait, 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 wait. I mean, you keep singing. I mean, the people come in and let them wait. Begin to cry to God. Oh Lord, undertake for me. Oh Lord, wait. Yes. Where's the oil? Go ahead and begin to anoint them. Go ahead, begin to anoint them. 